Aldrich, and I'm the CXO or Chief Experience Officer of NextPay. Um, so NextPay is a digital banking platform for small businesses and entrepreneurs in the Philippines. So we help small businesses actually, um, to be a little bit more specific, we help small businesses send invoices, collect payments, do payroll and pay their bills all under one platform. And so a little bit about myself and my co-founder, um, Don, uh, we both um, have a product and tech background. So my background uh, is all about design, user experience, um, and then Don's is all about software engineering. And um, yep, yeah, so we've worked in some really big companies before um, and also all about startups um, throughout our careers. So my most, uh, my latest one before coming over to the Philippines was at Remitly actually. Um, so in also in the fintech industry and it, it had a lot to deal with, um, you know, uh, overseas workers, a lot of Filipinos sending money back home uh, to their families. And so for the both of us, myself and Don, uh, we actually were born and raised in the Philippines, but we also did grow up in Vancouver. Um, I was trying to find my Canucks jersey, but I, I couldn't dig it up in time. Um, and we both met in SFU, um, Simon Fraser University. <clears throat> and that's actually what, what kind of brought us together. Because on, uh, on my first day of classes, um, I saw another Filipino guy in the room and we instantly connected. Uh, so we apparently we had the same uh, story where right after high school, we went over to Canada uh, to pursue a college degree. And so uh, ever since then, we've been working together on a lot of projects and, and even businesses and eventually, uh, I guess, this company. So just wanted to bring you a little bit of a journey before I talk a little bit more about NextPay is how did we end up here? Um, you know, we've been friends for a while. We've been working on a lot of projects and we took a trip back to the Philippines uh, in 2016. And this is where we really just explored the local landscape, got acclimated with, um, you know, with, with uh, our, our mother country. And we looked at the startup community. We explored everything. We talked to a lot of people and we really saw so much potential. And we saw all the signs of, of like a really growing and thriving economy. And, you know, all these innovations were popping up and people were starting to move towards, you know, more and more co-working spaces. And there's just so much talent um, and to be honest, there were a lot of uh, areas uh, ripe for innovation. So we took a one-way trip um, over here to the Philippines and uh, we haven't looked back. And we've gone through a few, uh, I, I guess we took a look at a number of industries all the way here in, in the Philippines, right? And eventually we landed on, um, after doing a lot of research, we landed within the realm of fintech and, you know, we explored a few ideas and we realized that, um, you know, 99.5% of Filipinos don't actually invest in anything. Um, there are a lot of people investing in insurance plans and all that, but uh, not, nothing really, really substantial. So we, we initially thought, look, okay, why don't we bring this whole wave of innovation or, or technology here in terms of like robo advisory and um, AI investing and all of that. But, you know, upon, um, you know, this is, this is something that we see more and more in more developed countries where people could actually afford that and they could uh, totally understand and comprehend, um, you know, just, I guess, artificial intelligence and investments in general. But I guess by and large, the population here was not completely ready uh, for this. So we kind of, um, upon doing even further research, we kind of scale it back and we realized like more and more people actually needed access to, to their, their funds sooner than later. Um, because people I, I, over here, they get paid, you know, twice a month or sometimes once a month. And it's actually pretty difficult um, being on that, that kind of schedule. So we really wanted to bring, you know, access to people's wages um, faster and sooner on the same day. Um, but upon even more research, we then, uh, you know, landed on, um, or rather, that's how we kind of came up with NextPay. You know, it, it's a, a salary man management technology, and we really wanted employees, employers to be able to send money to their employees as fast as possible. Um, so then we also realized, you know, a lot of um, employees... Uh, while they would uh, like access to their wages, they also don't really save that much money for themselves. 
um, due to a, a, a lot of reasons. So we thought, okay, why don't we automate savings for people? Um, again, through personalized finances, um, more artificial intelligence, and we would even have recommendations on what you can save for and how you can budget your, your paycheck every time you get paid. So that's kind of what we started in. And we really wanted to help more and more Filipinos um, save money and just get over to financial wellness and bring a little bit of financial literacy. Um, so we were already piloting this in late 2019 and very early 2020. But, you know, as we all know, the pandemic hit in uh, in early 2020. And when the lockdowns happened here in, in the Philippines, um, we realized that aside from employee wellness, of course, that was really important to people and to both employees and employers. But um, it wasn't at that time, it, it wasn't any more about wellness, it was more about employee survival because people could not get paid properly. People had to stock up on on supplies and medical supplies and food. And, you know, um, and other innovations came up you know, more and more. There was a big uh, surge of delivery services coming out, coming around because of the lockdowns, right? And so one of our, our, our customers right now, she started a delivery service and she had to pay over 70 of her delivery riders each day um, or you know each week. But because of the, the financial and banking landscape here, and it's, uh, it's actually quite disjointed and it's, it runs on a lot of outdated, more outdated technology, um, a lot of business owners end up having to resort to more manual uh, methods of paying people um, or paying their merchants and suppliers. And this was a problem. And so we realized that, okay, we actually need to shift to, to helping businesses in, in surviving in this pandemic. And again, not sure if, if most people are aware, but you know, uh, here we're still a very largely uh, cash-based economy, right? And people are very accustomed to dealing with checks and just cash and um, a slew of like late payments, I guess. So there was a, a whole low uh, adoption of tech and the, the, the pandemic really did push uh, adoption of digital uh, um, means. So here are just some of the things that uh, we all need to deal with, especially during payday. You know, people, again, writing checks, uh, long lines, manual invoices where you actually have to, to write it in hand. And we just thought that this was really not, not how things should be. And especially uh, myself and Don, you know, having experienced the banking landscape in the, the States and, and Canada, where you could really just get paid in any bank account you want. And, you know, you have Interact and um, people can pay each other by email or just through an app. It was great, um, but it was not the same over here. So that was, a, that was a whole opportunity for us. So another big problem that we encountered was, you know, corporate accounts over here require at least 25,000 uh, Canadian dollars or, you know, anywhere up to a million pesos in uh, daily balance requirements. And that's just way too much for, for a small business to afford. You know, that cash they could really use to, to free up and pay their employees and just run their business. But because they couldn't afford that, they had to resort to all those means that I, I just previously mentioned. And so as, as previously mentioned as well by another speaker was, you know, 99.52% of registered businesses are, are actually MSMEs in the Philippines. So there's such a huge uh, market that is uh, a, that we could address through through technology as well, and so you know the Philippines has around uh, estimated around 17 small business in totality, um, registered and unregistered, I guess. Um, so that's how we ended up moving towards you know NextPay being a more comprehensive digital banking solution, uh, and it really simplifies how people do business. So if you were to kind of take a look at what we actually are, we're a little bit of a cross between an e-wallet and a traditional bank. And it's really just a, a more of a digital bank um, banking solution to be specific. And so we help these businesses now in three major ways, and that's collecting payments, just managing their overall cash flow and sending money uh, really, really easily. So with sending money, especially at the moment, um, it's, uh, Th th that's one thing that is a major, major need here. Um, sending money in batches um, what is 
what helped a lot of businesses actually operationalize and, and move uh, faster with their operations, just because we could send to any bank or any e-wallet in the Philippines, and we have no limit of how many people you can send to in one go. So it just takes a few clicks. And you know, for, for a lot of businesses, this process would actually take, uh, we, the worst we've seen is around three to five days to just pay like 20 employees or so. Um, that's because they, they split up the money, they divvy it, they have to do cash check or, you know, all these different methods and it just didn't make sense to us. So that's how we, uh, we innovated with this. Lastly, with the, the connect, collecting payments, we now use it, digital invoices so people can pay it online versus having to pay things in check or, um, or bank transfers and all of that. So it's all a lot made a lot more convenient. So we're really aiming to cover uh, at least 90% of the financial operations an MSME has to deal with. So that's a quick summary, but I just wanted to share, share as, as well what is next for us is, uh, you know, of course, we're, we're building product. Myself and uh, my co-founder, we're really product builders at heart. Um, so we know what it takes to, to make a really, really good product um, and, and build it accordingly. So we're doing that and then we're growing our team. We have grown uh, quite a lot since the beginning. Um, we, uh, uh, and and I'll, I'll share a little bit of, of that too. Um, we're building integrations with HRIS systems, accounting systems and e-commerce stores. Um, and then of course we're focusing on partnerships with other MSMEs and MSME programs, uh, just like DTI and Kubo. So that, you know, to, in the hopes of reaching even more MSMEs and really helping them through, especially this pandemic, um, and we are on well on the road to Series A. So just wanted to share just for uh, for a little bit of fun is our quick startup journey. So myself and Don, we started out in, you know, just doing the, the typical startup garage mode of working in coffee shops, working in uh, just at home um, or co-working spaces. And I couldn't find a... Um, uh, a better photo, but this is one of the early photos that we had where it was just four of us, where we had a developer and another designer join us and build the early product. But um, as we continued through the months, and this was all through the lockdown, um, we added a few more people, and you can see me here with uh, with pandemic hair starting out. Um, but uh, it was in early January where we announced, uh, or we, we got into the Y Combinator program. Um, and since then, it's just been a, an amazing experience um, with rallying up and, and really linking up with even more uh, Filipino startups coming up here. And, and we're in a very fortunate position to kind of be able to support more and more MSMEs as they start and as they grow in their journey. Um, and so now, uh, this is not all of us, but today we're around 30 employees uh, total. And then uh, just yesterday, actually, we announced our, our seed funding um, with uh, various slew of investors and even some of the largest uh, family dynasties jumping in and supporting NextPay because they see the opportunity that, uh, of how we can support more and more businesses throughout the Philippines. Um, and yeah, so this is just the beginning for us. And um, yeah, so that's NextPay. That's a really, really quick presentation on NextPay. Um, and we're bringing actually good digital finances to small businesses in the Philippines. So if you'd like to get in contact, I'd, um, there's the information. I'll stick around for a bit. So thank you.